Hello, everyone, and good afternoon to you, wherever you are tuning in from around the world. You are now watching or viewing or being part of the Top Pharma program. The Top Pharma Speaks is an initiative that seeks to bring the different sectors of the economy when it comes to the agribusiness world together to network and prefer solutions to see a, a, a better way to solve the Nigerian agricultural problems that we have in our economy. My name is Manny Essien. If you allow me to be your host for the next few minutes, I promise you that I will not be boring. I will do all I can to provide you with all the agricultural funds that you need. All you have to do is just to indicate to me how much you need. And I promise to tell the government to provide it for you. <laughs> all in favor, say yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I'm your host, Manny Essien is my name. And I welcome you all wherever you're tuning in from. Um, at the moment, I am in transit, but hey, with thanks to Zoom, we can always connect and make things work. Remember that this very interactive session, you can always reach out to me by sending a message on the platform if you want to ask a speaker or you want to ask a general question, all right? And as always, this is a one hour session. So thank you. We have our very wonderful guest who is us with uh, today. Allow me to introduce you to our guest who is going to be speaking on many things. Um, I don't know if, can, can you can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? I hope yes, you can. You can. Yes, I can hear you. Continue, I can hear you. All right, thank you very much then. So I'll carry on. So let me introduce you to our guest uh, who will be speaking today. Uh, this individual who I'm about to introduce to you is, he is an Israeli trained agent business. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so our guest is an Israeli trained agribusiness development value chain expert with a passion for agricultural advocacy. And he has lots of experience in the agricultural advisory services. He is an agribusiness development coach, a certified value chain expert, and also an advocate for youth in agribusiness. He is an agro ambassador, urban farmer, promoter and a change agent with over a decade's experience in the agricultural sector. This man has trained over 2,500 youths and women through his periodical free on the farm agricultural business empowerment program. He is no other than Ambassador Adeni Ishola. He has been one of the strong voices in advocating for agriculture or agribusiness development in Nigeria through the youth inclusion in agriculture policy making. He is the founder of Go Green Africa Initiative, managing director of High Hill Agribusiness Development and Incubator Center, H-A-B-D-E-C. And he's a CEO of Natural Nutrients Limited. And he has described the agricultural sector as a sector with viable opportunities for young people to tap into. So Ambassador Adeni Ishola, Hope you can still hear my voice. Um, good afternoon to you, sir. Yeah, good, af good afternoon, um, everyone. Good afternoon, my host. How are you? Nice to have you on the show. Sir, this is your CV. Can I borrow it? Yeah, we are still building. <laughs> so you can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so for today's show, uh, before we carry on, I would like everyone to just join us and um, watch a one-minute video clip. And this clip has to be on poultry. All right. So just sit back just one minute so we can have an idea what the, what the poultry industry looks or feels like in Nigeria. So please sit tight and we'll be back in one minute. Poultry farming or production refers generally to the rearing of different species of birds like chickens, turkeys, guinea fowl, ducks, quails and so on for human consumption. Poultry farming is big business in Nigeria, contributing about 2 to 6% of the country's gross domestic product and about 25% of our agricultural GDP. The value of the commercial poultry industry in Nigeria is estimated at 80 billion naira and is rated as the most industrialized component of the livestock subsector. Over 25 million people are employed directly or indirectly in the commercial poultry industry 
With an estimated 85 million people involved in rural farming poultry, managing total assets of about 320 billion naira. The top farmer. All right then, that was very really entertaining. All right, so if you're just tuning in, don't forget we have Ambassador Adeni Ishola, who is our guest speaker for today's show on the Top Farmer Speaks. Our focus this week will be on poultry. I'm sure a lot of people have heard about how profitable the poultry industry is. So what are the myths? What are the stories? What are the facts and the figures? How profitable is the poultry industry in Nigeria? We're going to break the show into different segments. But first off, our dear speaker, I'm sure you have a lot to say about this particular topic. Well, before we go into the questions and answers session, I would like you to please help our, us just, you know, say uh, one or two things about uh, the broiler, the layer, and the egg, for those of us who don't know what these are. Thank you. Once again, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I want us to be very active this evening. Is evening, right? Okay. Um, as much as we are moved, uh, let's just have tumble. Just let me see your tumble if, if you are in this session. So once again, this afternoon, we want to talk about poetry and um, we we talk a lot about it. Yes, I love this. Um, Develon Farms, Olai Inkai, Dimu, please just give me Tombo so that I know that we have a lot of people. Olusha Olai, Paye, you're good? Yes, yeah, good. So we want to talk about poultry generally, and we are going to you know, diversify and look at sections by sections. When we talk about poultry, the first thing that comes to mind is chicken. The first thing that comes to mind is eggs. You know, but when we talk about poultry generally, we're talking about the practice or say the farming or process of rearing birds. The process of rearing birds. And this part of the world, there are some birds we don't eat. Uh, we have a lot of birds we don't eat in this part of the world. I'm talking about Nigeria. But let's look at it. When we talk about birds, we're talking about the chickens, we're talking about turkey, we're talking about geese, we're talking about ostrich, we're talking about, can you just, you can just type at the chat room and just mention birds that, you know, pigeons, rearing of flying animals, it's called poultry. It's called poultry. It's as simple as that. And in agribusiness, generally, I want us to take this this afternoon. Most people just come up with the fact that, oh, I want to do this without in-depth knowledge of, of what they want to do. Now, there's a difference between agriculture and agribusiness. There's a huge difference between agriculture and agribusiness. And most of the time, I simplify my definition by saying that agribusiness is the business of agriculture. Agribusiness is the business of agriculture. The meaning of this is as much as you have passion, as much as you have love for, for farming or for agri, you are still coming into the industry as a businessman or woman. So as a businessman or woman, what are you looking at? You are looking at exchanging value for money. Exchanging value for money. So coming into poultry industry, the first thing you need to know or have at the back of your mind is that it's like every other business. It's like every other business. You have to do your SWOT analysis very well. And when we talk about SWOT, we're talking about your strength. We're talking about the threat, the opportunity, you know, and the rest. You have to determine the type that fits your personality. Who are you? When I say who are you, I'm talking about the level of your knowledge about the poultry industry. Do you want to go for broiler production? Broiler production is the process of raising the male and female chicken for meat, uh, for the purpose of meat, for, pro for meat production. Now, between day one to four weeks, six weeks, depending on the way you want them to go. So we know we have a lot of people that now do organic. They grow between 0.4 grams to 2 kg in the process of six weeks, and you sell them. Now, for those that want to go into broiler, I tell people that is one of the easiest to do, but it's also one of the most, you know, 
um, is a bit technical because you need to understand the market even before you produce. I told you about the spot analysis the other time. Before you produce anything, you must have a market. For example, let's take it now. This is September, right? September, you want to rear your broiler now because you listen to this training or that, you want to do broiler. By October, by November 2nd week, your broiler is done, is ready. 1.5, 1.8, 2 kg. What do you then do? Who buys from you? Because it's a bit seasonal. But due to the closure of borders and every other thing, the appreciation for the local content, the demand for broiler has really increased now. We have a lot of people that are looking for, for broilers, you know, they are looking for it seriously. Most of the chickens we now take, let's say 60%, I won't be able to say 80 or 100. 60% of the chickens we take today are slaughtered locally and are raised locally. And that's the good news. You can imagine it's a 5 billion, you know, industry. It's a 5 billion industry. Look at the, this way. If you have a market for production, say to produce a ton, a ton is 1,000 kg. And I'd say that uh, between six weeks, you can have two kg. So 500 birds can give you 1,000 kg. Currently, the price of, um, I think it's around 1,400 per kg. Okay, I think if you can still hear me, Ambassador, we have a network problem, but I'm sure we'll be reconnected um and we are we still connected can we see uh, maybe an indication that we are all still connected if you don't mind please you can indicate with your hand uh just to be sure that we're all still connected yes we're still connected so let's hang on for the ambassador for a few minutes i'm very sure um whatever okay he wants to log back into the platform please bear with us uh, i want to greet you thank you for tuning in um, Shehu Abdullahi, I see you. Um, I see you as well. Okojoku, I see you. Thank you for tuning in. Adeyemi, Adeshona, Sam, uh, Waliu Abdul, Marianne, um, Everglow Farms. Thank you. I see all of you. Thank you. The Top Farmer Foundation, Barista Musa, Olayinka Idumu, Isa Musa, uh, Ebeneza. We all see you as well. The DLCF, Ishagu, we see you. Oni Olufemi. And everybody else, uh, please permit me Hello, to just am run. I, am I on? Am I back? Yes, you're back on. Thank you. We lost you. We thought that you had gone to uh, your farm or something. Uh, uh. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Just take me out. So I was saying that Ibadan, you know, your state is the capital of poultry business. You know, when you want to pick your birds, you pick from different company. We have a lot of them. I don't know whether I'm permitted to mention their names. We have a lot of them. Host, am I permitted to mention names? Yes, you're permitted. Go ahead, please. Okay. Okay. We are looking at the type of the likes of she. You are looking at the likes of um, Zatek. You are looking at the likes of uh, Bassinger Farms. You know, a couple of them, a lot of them. They are located at Oluyole, uh, the industrial estate in Oluyole. That's the home of poultry. We are talking about broiler. So I'm saying that it's a lucrative business, but you must have markets. Market before production, because the moment they get to 2 kg and you are not taking them off to market, then you're in big trouble. Big trouble. You're in big trouble because you need to continually field, field them. Why? If you don't field them, they will just start going down. You fed them for six weeks, 2 kg, excellent. You try, don't feed them for two days or three days. They will do you shaggy. They will lose weight like what is going on? What, what you will be like, wow, they will lose weight. So before you produce, make sure you have markets that will take that, you know, meat from you. It's a lucrative business, but you need to understand. I told you about personality. Who are you? What type of knowledge do you have about what you want to do? You need to go all out and get your hands dirty and learn from somebody that is doing it, not just doing it, but doing it successfully well. After that, you start small. You can think big, like I used to tell my students. Think big. Start small, then you scale fast. Make sure you learn. You need to understand the diseases. You need to understand injections. You need to understand the environment that suits them. You need to understand even structure placement. When we are constructing pens, 
there are ways we, you know, we place them. There are things you look out for when you are making your construction. So you need to understand this. Then your capital, we're talking about you now, personality. You need to look at your capital. What do I have? Before you start, you must have the cost of the, the pen. The pen must be ready. You have the knowledge now. The next thing is you must have the cost of the breaths. You are picking them from day one, um, uh, day old, or you want to pick them two weeks for somebody that have taken them to that stage. No problem. You must have the money. Even make sure you have the feed in the store. The feed that will take these beds for the next six weeks. Hello? This is not the type of business that somebody promised to give you money and you go ahead and start. Yeah, you have two bags, three bags, and you are feeding them. Your uncle is not sending the money that you are looking for, you know, for money. To, you must have this feed in store because six weeks is just around the corner. We're talking about around 48 days, you know, there are about 50 days, you know, there are about. You must make sure that at least your first production, if you have the capacity for 20, go for 20, you have for 50, depending on, on your capital and your knowledge base. That is that about Brella, no big deal about Brella. Easy to start, easy to go, but you just need basic knowledge about that. Are you good? Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Just thumb up, thumb up. Since we cannot uh, on most, just thumb up. It's for those of you I'm seeing your video, just you can just do this. Okay. Oh, excellent, excellent, excellent. So let's talk about layers. Let's talk about I told you the other time that poaching means the business of raising flying birds, or let's say flying animals, birds generally. I told you we have the chicken, turkey, ostrich, dog, just name it. Recently, I happened to have one of the biggest dog farm in Nigeria. Um, do you know what happens to me? I couldn't sell the dogs. I couldn't sell the dogs. I have a lot of them, almost 700 pieces, pekings. Uh, uh, I have pekings, I have uh, khaki campbell and some other you know, species. A lot of people were making an inquiry, but I could not sell because most people still have this traditional belief that we don't eat duck. And duck is one of the most consumed poultry birds in the world, most especially in, you know, in the Asia part of the, of, of the planet. They take a lot of, it's a premium bird. It's a premium. The same thing with Turkey. Turkey, yes, we're getting used to Turkey because of what has been coming in from Kotonou. But when you talk about Turkey, you rear your local Turkey, for those of you that have done that before, you notice that the meat is so strong, like you're eating malu, you know, very white, you know, and, and very good. But not like the few weeks old that we take, you know, we import into the country with a lot of um, injection. Now, some of this verse, your location, religion, belief. When I say location, I'm still talking about environment. It determines what you should do. If you stay in an area where they don't consume a particular type of birds, please don't waste your money to do it. Don't try to be the change agent. Some of us have tried it. I tell people, why do you have a mentor? Why do you want to revenge the wheel? I tried to be a change agent by bringing dog big time. I got my finger bones. I was just dashing them out. Just like the last set, I, I just gave some, someone recently, including geese. I have lovely big geese. But you know, I cannot even bring myself to, to even take one of the geese and slaughter them. I can. Lovely animals. So some of these are pets. Pets. I gave my, my geese out. I gave all those birds out so that I can you know, concentrate on the ones that have ready-made market. So let's talk about layers. Let's talk about layers. Layers are the, the, the chicken. You can use any word, chicken, no, hen, no, whatever. They are rear purposely for mm -hmm. egg production. I told you broilers are rear for meat production, for the purpose of meat. Why these layers are for the purpose of egg. And after the period of time, you know, I haven't given you egg for the period of time that you can still sell them, you know, for meat. That is when you hear the word old layers. Oh, I want to buy old layers. I want to buy old layers. Now let's talk about this. This is the business. Big one, big one. You don't come into layer production if you don't have the rubber. I'm talking about money. It needs a lot of money. A lot, lot of money. I won't sit here and start telling you, yes. You, you can start small. 
Maybe you want to consume or you are trying to learn. But when you are talking about the business of egg production, you need a lot of money. A thousand, for example, let's do the calculation, everyone. A thousand layers, you know, total for you to have a thousand capacity, you should be looking at around today, today you should be looking at around um, seven to eight million naira for a thousand birds. Which includes your pen. The number one thing is your pen. Number two is your cage. Your cage can be imported or locally fabricated, depending on your financial capacity. I cannot, you know, I keep saying the word knowledge. I don't want to go to that route again. I've shown you other personality. You must have knowledge for what you want to do. I don't believe you just take your money, your hard hand money, and you just go and do something you don't have knowledge of. No. You should have knowledge of that. Make sure you learn. You know, for me, some things, some of some things I don't know. I travel as far as any part of Africa and I go as an apprentice, you know, or sometimes I go as an intel, you know, to learn. We need to learn. And I, I said the other time that when learning, learn from the best. Learn from somebody that is doing it very well, that is successfully doing it. We have a lot of multi-millionaires in, in, you know, in the poultry sector, a lot. It's a very good business. Once you get your A's and B's together, once you get it from the top and not, your input versus your output, make sure you have all these things ready. We are, what are we talking about? Number one is your pen. Number two is your cage. I said you can get imported or you can get locally fabricated. Number three, number three is your birds. Where are you buying your birds from? You must buy from a certified supplier. I told you go to Oluyole uh, Industrial Estate. There are a lot of companies there. Do your research. Look at the company that has what you're looking for. You know, look at them. We have those that do their layers from they hold, and we have those that say point of cage. We have those that sell at point of lay. It depends on what you want to pick. You can decide to pick your birds from day one and take very good care of them yourself. Make sure they have all the vaccination that is needed. But the, by the time you are buying point of cage, be sure you are buying from the right source. Make sure they've gotten all the, you know, the vaccination they need. But let me tell you the truth. Let me tell you the truth. When someone tells you, except those, you know, big suppliers with, you know, a lot of respect, I really, I really believe people that say, oh, yes, this is point of cage or point of leave. When they are telling you point of cage, be ready to still take care of the birds before they are even ready for that. Especially when they say point of lay. You know, the higher they are, or the bigger the birds are, the, the more expensive they are. Now, when they tell you point of lay, sir, ma, put it at the back of your mind that the birds will still stay up to two to three or four weeks in your farm before they start laying. Just put it there. You might be lucky and they start laying immediately, but it's rare. I'm telling you, it's rare. You know, we're in a country where we want everything fast, fast, but it doesn't come like that. When they tell you that point of lay, get ready, make sure you have layers, uh, you know, the layers feed to feed these birds for the next two to four weeks before they start dropping. Don't forget knowledge, capital, source, where you are buying your birds from. That's number, I said number one, your pen, number two, your cage, number three, your birds. Number four, vaccination. Vaccination number five, number five, feed, feed, feed. Now, let me tell you, let me tell you. I said, I mentioned something when we we're talking about broiler the other time, that this type of business, the same thing with catfish, this type of business are the type that don't understand I've not collected salary. My salary is coming. By the time I get my salary, I will buy uh, pen bags. 20 bucks. No. The moment you don't feed your layers, they will start dropping. For those of you that have experience of this, you will know that. You know what it takes you before they start dropping. You can imagine when they get, you know, they will get, there's a time they get to the peak. So you can imagine when they get to their peak, 
where they're supposed to start giving you back to back every day, every other day, then you, the feed got finished in the store. They will stop laying. And before they will start laying again, they will punish you. They will do you shaggy. They will do you shaggy. So make sure you are ready before you start. Make sure you are what? You are ready before you start. Number six. And I tell people this is one of the most crucial. Address to find input when it comes to agribusiness. That is farm worker. I don't like using the word labor. Farm worker. Or let's say support staffs. Or let's say staff. Any English you want to, you want to call. This is the address part. I'm telling you. Now, let, let me give you this. 60 to 70% of people going into agribusiness currently have another thing they are doing. You have your eight to five job. Now you are diversifying into agri. You want to build that so that maybe in five or 10 years, when you retire, you have something you want to retire home. So the meaning of that is you are not the one on the farm. You have a supervisor, maybe you have a manager, or maybe you have whatever name you call the person. Now, this guy determines whether you, you are successful or not. There's a lot of problem when it comes to labor, when it comes to support staff in the poultry industry. A lot. Tet. <laughs> the volume of tet is huge. There was a time we were doing evaluation for a project for a farm. You know, this farmer just discovered that they are losing. They're losing a lot of money. And he was like, Please come around, come look at my, my business. Let's look at the system. Please help me look at what is going on. We, we go to the farm on Thursday. We stay in a, in, a, in a guest house not too far from the farm. And on, on Friday morning, we, we all went to the farm and we met one of the staff, you know, coming out of the farm with two jerry cans. Two jerry cans. And the farm owner was greeting him. Oh, DG, how are you? I said everything. Well done, well done. Thinking that DG is fashion water. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know what is in the jerry can? Eggs. Eggs. Broke, you know, all, everything. They just drop it into the jerry can. Feed up. Number one, feed up. Number two, feed up. This guy sells this to those that make um, confessionaries, those that make cakes. Pies and the rest. Two jerry cans. You can imagine the numbers of eggs that will fill a 25 liters jerry can. Can you imagine that? A lot of atrocity. Some people will even take the feed from the store and sell. Let's say you have 100 bags in the store. You are a banker. You are, a, you are a manager somewhere, you're busy. You only go to the farm on Saturday. Then the nice thing is they're saying that, hey, these birds are taking five, five bags per day now. Oh, they are taking six, six bags per day now. How do you monitor this? Now the guys will give the birds four bags and they will sell two bags. Or they will keep the two bags and sell it back to you. Because they will just call you on Wednesday and say, hello, sir. Hello. They, they understand the whole thing. They will call you around 9 a.m., 10 a.m. When you are settling down in the office and you are so busy, you know, your workload is huge. Hello, sir. Ah, DG, why are you calling me? Ah, hello, sir. Ah, I'm a Yoruba man. So I, for those of you, Monique is off in your own yard, yet all, on yard, yet all. Then you will be like, ah, what can we do now? What can we do? Ah, but maybe we should just go and buy two for them now or till it till when you will come home. They are selling your feed to you, man. I told you that it's a business like every other business. You need to understand all this. We have different ways uh, by which we try to curtail this. We have things we do, things we teach uh, farmers to do, but I cannot say we are 100% uh, <laughs> that you can get rid of it 100%. That is even when you have people working in the farm. It's at any community, the host community where you have your farm, people in that village or town or whatever don't want to work. They don't want to work. Another thing is the property in which you have your poultry must be fenced and you have to be very neat because they are the type of animal that attract reptiles a lot. So your farm has to be very, very clean and neat. 
and it has to be secure. You can't just do poetry in an open space. No, if you're operating on a plot, you have to fence. An acre, you have to fence. Five acres, 10 acres, 20 acres. You have to make sure that your environment is secure. I think I need to stop at this level so that can, my host can have the floor to give me more directive. Thank you. Wow, this is so much information. I, I really appreciate you, uh, uh, Ambassador, uh, for the insights. Uh, please remember that, that you can also send your questions uh, by just messaging me in the chat section so that if you have a question directly, I like to do things directly, you know, because it's not only me that is here. Let us uh, share knowledge. And um, there are so, so many questions that have been sent to me, Honorable Ambassador Adeni, please, I call you that. There's some questions that have been prepared for you before your, you came. Uh, these questions are, have been curated by people from all over the world, in Nigeria, everywhere, they have these questions. One question that strikes me, I want to go with this first question because I think it's, it's very important. Um, which poultry business is the most profitable? Poultry for eggs or poultry for meats? Well, um, it actually depends on your market. It depends on your market. For poultry for meat is a plus plus thing. Six weeks, you are gone. If so if you have huge market that is ready to take a lot of tons um, from you, then be something you can do, uh, say, like seven times in a year. So let's let's do the maths now. Let's say you make um, 100 naira or 200 naira per kg. Uh, let me use 100 naira. I like using the lowest. Let's say you make 100 naira per kg and you do um, a ton. Let's come down. And you do a ton per, per six weeks. Let's do the math together. 100 times 1,000. 100 times 1,000. That should be a million, right? Am I correct? What do we do about that? So am I correct? 100 times 1,000. Yes, how much is that? That's 100,000. Okay, that's 100,000 naira. Is that 100,000 naira? Yes, 100 times 1,000 is 100,000. Okay, good, 100,000. Now, that is uh, on every ton, on every ton of six weeks, reckless imagination, lowest figure. Now, let's say you do this every six, six weeks. And I told you this is just 500 bucks. This is nothing. This is just 500 bucks. At two kg is a ton. So let's say you are doing 10,000 bucks. Let's say you are doing 5,000 bucks. Let's say you are doing that. So, and you can do this if, you're, if you have a contract, you have a seal contract, you know, that is asking for this all the time. Now I have friends that do, we call, we'll call it stagger production. There's a two weeks in tavern. When you stock, Today, in two weeks, you stock again. In two weeks, you stock again. These are for big commercial farmers. So they supply every two, two weeks. When this is six weeks and they are going out, the other ones are four weeks. In another two weeks, the four weeks is six weeks is going on. And as you are, they are going out, you are stocking again, you are stocking again. So it's a very nice business on its own. It's a very nice business on its own when you have market. But egg, egg production requires a lot of capital and it gives sustainable income. For a longer period of time. Now, what it does, unlike uh, meat production, meat production, you have to get every of this money ready and plow and wait for when you get the money again and plow. But in head production, you, you put in the money, then within a short period of time, the moment the birds start laying, you can now get a kind of relief where you start selling your eggs to get money to run uh, the farm. So I think it depends on individual. And it depends on the market. The egg is more sustainable because the demand for egg have not been would not been able to meet the demand, except when we have there are times when we have glove, there are times when we have all these other issues. But the, the egg business is a bit sustainable, is a bit sustainable, and um, it gives peace of mind. And when I say sustainable, yes, it encompasses everything. But for broiler, for those that love pa pa pa, you know. Once you have a very written, you know, um, agreement, awesome. For example, recently we signed an MOU. We signed an MOU here, not in, in Brella now, it, 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 Pepe, Abanero. Very, you see, when you get to a stage in the business, when you get a stage in agribusiness, you understand that it's a money-making machine. I call it MMM. It's a money-making machine. 
why now we are going to the dry season when 60 to 70 percent of farmers will start relaxing that is when i will start working because i do 100 percent you know 100 percent arranged farming i don't do rain fed. now this contract is to take abanero from nigeria to uk the company came all the way from uk signed a very lovely mou with us that will be giving us a lot of millions every week now contract standard mou irrevocable orders once you have all these things sorted out then you make a lot of money in the egg production the beautiful thing is you can even get other people's money in egg production this is how it works you have a depot you have a big depot because we don't encourage buyers to come to the farm directly because of biosecurity i tell farmers you don't allow you don't need to show up it's an industry where you don't show up you are just at risk especially for livestock farmers you don't just bring everybody to your farm even in crop production vegetables we don't even encourage it anymore so if somebody wants to see what you do you can send videos to them so or have a depot once you have a depot there are a lot of people every day looking for eggs you know what happens they will register with you. Depots even collect money for you to buy eggs from them. You will register, say, register 50,000, and you sign agreement with them. Some people even pay up front. That's so please, let me get 100 crates every week. Please give me 200 crates every week. Oh, 200 crates is going to cost one, 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 one. Okay, I'm going to drop 50% of it so that I can be one of your number one, you know, you know, off taker. That is an egg production for you. But in broiler production, like I told you, the appreciation for the local meat is just coming up when the border, you know, got closed. So that is, but I believe, you know, the demand is now becoming so, so huge. And I know that if, if we stick, you know, um, stick with the border closure for BB a little bit, we'll get used to our local production. So I, I, I think I'm able to explain that. I think the person that has a question is with us. Okay, thank you very much. Uh... Ambassador, we have a question here for you. Many questions. This one is from Everglow Farms. And they have two questions. One is, how do we tackle the glut by small-scale farmers? And what do we do about the high price of feed? That's the mm -hmm. question from Everglow Farms. Okay, you, let, me start, let me start with, mm -hmm. um, with um, the feed. Uh, there are things that we really, when you say small-scale farmer, it's unfortunate that we're in a clan where the understanding of agribusiness is not really well known, you know, by our government. We really don't, they, they really don't understand agribusiness. They still operate around agriculture. For, for example, you see seminars, symposium, trainings. You read in the newspaper billions of naira given to farmers. I want to ask every farmer there, how many of you have gotten out of these billions of naira you see in the paper? Average nobody. Now, when we are doing trainings and all this conference and stuff like that, you see people that have not been to farm for like three years, four years, talking about the industry, unfortunately, trying to bring in solution to the industry and the people that need the solution are not in attendance. So you are talking to Ibo to Ibo, the solution is not coming up. When we talk about the feed, eh? as a small scale farmer, there's nothing you can do because the input, 60% of the input in the poultry industry are the grains, most especially maize and soya. Maize and soya. And unfortunately, we don't have them in huge quantity yet in Nigeria. We don't have them in huge quantity. Let's come to the Southwest region or let's come to the Southern region. If you want to play in the grain business or you want to, you want to farm say uh, maize or soya is we are at a disadvantage because of our weather by the time you do the rain fed now is the time to plant the maize that will be kept in the store because of the moisture content now by the time you farm and rain is still falling august we used to have august break this year there's nothing like break it's even overwhelming now your maize is on the stock because you are supposed to leave your maize on the store for the moisture content to be reduced, then when you harvest, you the shell that you take to the store. But we can't really do that very well in the southern region. So we could not even augment what is coming in from the northern region. Then the demand 
for the production from the land is so huge. Different big organization is asking for the same grain for beer. They're asking for the same grain for other things. Why the feed millers are asking for the same thing? Now, in a, in a clan where things are done very well, governments play around that with subsidies. We have silos everywhere. Look at every of our silos. If you are privileged to move closer to them and eat on those silos, you will hear the sound. Ooh, 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 there's nothing in those silos. In other parts of Africans, you know, there are a lot of, there are tons, over, say 30, 30,000, 50,000 tons that will be released to a particular association for them to use as a subsidy for feed. No, the input for feed is not available, so there's no way the cost will not go up. For example, there's a particular company, Olam to be precise, they plant maize, they produce food, feed, they produce their own, they produce, they also do fattening, which is broiler, and they do layer. At the end of the day, one company is paying across the whole value chain, and they are still selling feed to the market. Can you imagine that? So whatever price they call their feed, you see, like if you buy it or not. Regulation. We don't have proper regulation. So small-scale farmers are at disadvantage. You get there today, it's 3,007. You get there tomorrow, it's 4,002. Nobody to talk to, nobody to hold responsible. And by the time you increase the price of your egg, you are so limited. Because you're a small scale farmer working with just how many crates of eggs. So you can't even decide the price. Then the Poultry Association of Nigeria are really not bringing sustainable solutions on the table. So the problem, if we want to talk about problem in the Nigeria agribusiness sector, we can do this for one week. But the solution is, how small are you? Is there anything you can do, an alternative source of feed for your animal? Can you do warm production so that you can actually increase your level of protein? Would you love to, you know, plant some of the things that we know will keep your animals a bit healthy? It's easy as a small scale, but not for commercial production where you have 10,000, 20,000 birds, you know, it's not easy. And when you are doing your local formulation too, you have to be very careful because of uh, different diseases, aflatoxin that comes with your maize and the rest. So it's, it's, it's a bit uh, complicated, but I know that as we continually, you know, move, you know, to understand the industry, we are going to get to the road um, very soon. That then about glut, as a small scale farmer too, you also cannot determine or play when it comes to glut because you are just in the middle. It's like Yoruba will say, when two elements are fighting, it's the grass that will suffer. You know, it's a small scale that suffered that because what gives glut? Maybe, when um, big organizations decide to reduce the price of their products or, or goods, and the cost of production for the small scale farmer is higher. When they say a crate of, for example, say a crate is one time, how much is a crate in your area? Now, please, you can just type it and put it there. How much is a crate of egg in your area? Now, during Christmas, somebody will just say, okay, I'm reducing 100 naira from every of my crates. And you know, those kind of news spread very fast. And everybody say, ah, no, 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 no. They are now saying, no, I can't buy it, I can't buy it because they are now selling it at so so price. They are now selling at so so price. Why is it that your own is expensive? How is it that your own is expensive? Before you know it, you are in a big problem because you are not a determinant. You are not a determinant in, in, in the industry. So glut is also another game in business, you know, some people can decide to, you know, cause that. Then circumstances, diseases, issues can also cause that. You know, for example, recently, I think recently, three weeks or four weeks, uh, there was a notice, you know, across the production uh, zones that, um, I forgot the name of this disease that is at Kamburu or something, and everybody was afraid. So some people can be, pan can be so, you know, they, they start selling. If I sell it, hey, panic, yeah, there. So that can also bring down the price. But I tell people, innovation also matters. Innovation matters. And that is one thing for me, as an agri practitioner, uh, I, I innovate a lot. I will just sit down and look at my environment. If I can't play across the country, my environment, what can I do? That is why you can decide to directly push your products to some particular environment.
recently I was training some young guys and I say, do you know the rate at which estate are springing up in Nigeria? Now, for smart people, nothing stops you from having your own agro shop or say a food mart where people can come to and buy the produce that come from your farm or other farm. I tell people, most time you don't need to all be in production. Do you know that middlemen makes more money than those of us in production? Yes. They will come to your farm and buy at a particular price. Now, the, yes, it says 1,800 now in uh, crates. They might buy this thing for 1,005, for 1,006 from the farm. And they are selling at 1,800. They are not doing anything like feeding. They are not doing anything like um, vaccination. They are not paying rent. They are not paying staff. They will just come and pick the eggs from your farm and they will sell at the price they want to sell. If you are not careful, you will still go to eatery and buy your egg again at a very ridiculous price, you know? So you can have your own food mat. You don't necessarily need to be in production. If you don't have the time or the knowledge, you can be, you know, you can play around, around the value chain. The value chain is massive. You can be, you can play as a marketer, buy from a particular farm, put it in your food shop and sell. You're, especially for those of you in the mega city. I'm talking about Lagos, I'm talking about Port Harcourt, you know, just look for a very nice place, get a nice shop, touch it up, clean it up, and put these things there. You might not even have them in stock. People can then book ahead, and you can even deliver to them. If you, can, if you are delivering a crate of egg to me at home for 2000 I would, I would gladly pick it. Unlike me going to the market to buy at 1800 I won't really see... An average Nigerian won't really see, or let me say the middle, the, the elite, the middle class, the elite won't really see the 200 naira as any big thing. So you need 10, 20, 40, or 50 families that can take one crate of egg per week. You know, that is four per month and multiply by this number of families, just supply these people and, and you are good at your own price. Letting them know that your birds are, are, are premium and your heads are very good. What can you do? Clean up your heads. You know, clean up your heads, your, your tree. You can even put labels on your head tree. You can even do the cover up tree. It just be innovative. Just be innovative. We're talking about market here. Just be innovative. Thank you. Okay, we're still taking questions from any everybody out there. You can send in your question uh, by either in the, you want to speak live or you want to send a message. You can do so in the chat section. We have some very interesting questions here for you, sir. This one is from uh, a foundation. They say, is it advisable to get a loan to start a poultry business? And if yes, what is the minimum re capital required to set up a medium scale poultry farm? They're looking for the minimum required. Okay, the answer is no. Capital, no. You don't start any business with loan you grow your business with loan. You don't start business with loan. You grow business with loan. It's like, let me give you the scenario. Um, you don't know how to drive a car and you have an uncle that owns a car. He has only one car. Wow, wow. And you go to your uncle to say, ah, uncle, please give me your car. I want to learn how to drive it. I want to learn how to drive, wow, so please wow. give me your car. If the uncle made the mistake of giving you the car, the car will not come back home intact. Because you don't know anything about the car. So the moment you enter into the car, you will bash the car or the car will bash you. So the best thing the uncle can do is to sit beside you and show you how to drive. Do you understand this now? You start small, then you can scale later. Start with whatever it is you have, then you understand it. Why is my bed, why is my head small? What can I do? These beds are not laying. What can I do? Oh, these beds are dying. What can I do? By the time you understand all this, then you can increase your production. You can increase your production till when you can now become authority in that sphere of business. So once again, everybody, I want to say, please don't start your business with love. Start with the little you have, and, and grow. Thank you. So I know you've, um, just to re-emphasize on people who are just tuning in, somebody asked, 
they, they they want to know, you know, give a rough estimate of what they can invest into the minimum requirements to start their own poultry farm. Where is relative, uh, my host, <laughs> is relative. What is small to you might be big to somebody else. And what is big to you is just tiny to another person. Mr. Shehu Abdullahi, you are smiling, right? I can see you from there. <laughs> that is it. Mr. Juku, how are you? Mr. Waliu Abdul, these are the three people that have been mm -hmm. following me now. <laughs> now, generally for broiler, for broiler, you can start with, say, 10 birds, less than 100,000, you can start something in broiler. Uh, for layers, less than two, 300,000, you can start something, no problem. That is starting small. But I say small is relative. Small is relative. Um, if you're looking at a thousand birds, like I said the other time, you're looking at around 7 million to 8 million, all things together, talking about the pen, talking about uh, the birds, talking about the vaccination, talking about the feed, talking about uh, workmanship. You must have, for example, in, in the layers business, you must have at least minimum of six months salary ready for your labor. You know, you must get that ready. And in broiler, you must have the feed. Don't say, I'm going to do this, then I will buy feed later. No, no. The moment you don't feed them, they will go back and do you shake it. They will go put um, catfish. <laughs> that one is crazy. Don't feed them for two days. When you go next, they will be so lean. It's only the head that you see. It's only the head. The same thing with layers. They will not lay for you. They will punish you. They will not lay. So make sure you have everything it takes. You can start as small as even five thousand, um, fifty thousand, depending. There are small cages you can buy and say start with twenty beds. You know, start with thirty beds and see how it goes. Then, then you can now begin to expand. But if you want to go big time and you know you are not, you have no problem with that. You talk to professionals. We have we have consultants that handle all these things from even the land acquisition to to the market. We have them. Yeah. Okay. We have uh, this one question. I, I think you kind of touched on something uh, of this nature, you know. If uh, I, but let me just try to rephrase it a bit. It has to do with um, hormones. Uh, there is this belief that um, a lot of farmers, you know, they 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 may be guilty. I'm not using the word guilty of uh, engaging poultry growth hormones. Does this have any effect on human health? You know, when uh, their, you know, their birds have been artificially stimulated. Does it have any effect on the human health? Yes, anything, anything that is not good is not good. There's no other name you can call it. If this is bad, it is bad. But I want to tell you this evening, I want to tell you this evening that um, it's not a rampant practice in the poultry sector. It's not a rampant practice. Let me, let me even shock you, especially for meat production. As of today, we are now having, most of the pro producers are now health conscious. That is why you start seeing organic produce, organic produce. I know a lot of guys that don't even use a single vaccination on their birds. They rather treat them organically by using things like neem, neem oil, neem leaves, and different things to, to, to treat ailments. They have their own form of boosters and the rest. If you look at us in this part of the world, we are not the, we're really not the uh, inorganic kind of people, even in crop production and vegetable, because it is when you have money that you will not start buying fertilizer in essence and all those things that happens in the Western world. Yes, some people use homo, but it's not a rampant practice. Then, like I said, it is not a good practice. If anybody does that, that is bad. It will surely have, you know, impact on, on the health. Don't forget that we stay in a country whereby our health is already, you know, fragile. An average Nigerian is not fit. I'm telling you. An average Nigerian, forget about gym and all those things. We are not fit because we live in a, in, you know, in a system or in a, in a country where we are under panic almost all the time. Yes. So coupled with um, toxic um, environment, and now you, you need too money you have. You want to just consume a uh, small protein now and it's being uh, laced up with different uh, rubbish. No, it's going to have a lot of effects. And one thing with the earth problem is it doesn't even show in your face immediately, accumulates. 
into accumulate. By the time it's going to spring up, then you start running around and looking for solutions. So I want to say that I don't think, I will not say I will, I'm, I, I don't accept that uh, it's something that is rampant in the poultry industry. But this afternoon, we might have some people uh, here listen to this and they, they intend to start and somebody is telling them, don't worry now, you can just inject then. I will say, please don't engage in that. Thank you. Okay. This is very uh, interesting. I'm where the questions are beginning to come now. I don't know. Uh, some people are asking this ap apprenticeship is one of the major um, problems we have in this part of the world. Uh, maybe lack of adequate apprenticeship of something. Do you have any sort of a mentorship program? Are you, do you accept co coppers? Yes, of course. We have different programs for different people. We have um, training programs that span between two weeks to uh, six months, depending on, on, on what you want to learn. For me, um, I'm a rand um, farmer. That means I, I operate in almost all aspects of agribusiness. Um, we also have um, intels, those that want to do internship one year. They want to, want to study the business of agriculture. We also take them, we take core members, we take IT students, CUS students. You know, I, I love working around the youth, but unfortunately, uh, people are not, um, we're not the type that relax, especially the younger generation. Uh, yes, they want to know they initially, and within a short period of time, they think they've known and they're out there trying to also be organized. So that has always been the problem. People not really putting all into what they are learning. So they just want money. We are money oriented. And so that's a problem. But we do all these trainings. Uh, some are free, some are paid, you know, depending on, on what uh, you, you want as an individual. Okay, um, I think my host is not available. I can continue. Uh, there's this question from uh, Mr. Oni Olufemi, please, we will appreciate if the recorded video is sent to everyone. Thanks. Sorry yes, about I, that. I think it's a network. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, we will be able to. I believe this is recorded, and they wish they should be able to send it to us. It's a good one. So let I, you have the floor, sir. Please continue. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable. And um, you saw the question. Somebody is asking, uh, what do they do when the weight of uh, their layer beds? is lagging behind when compared with the expected weight of uh, the birds. How do so, how does somebody make them gain weight? That question is uh, for you, sir. You know, we talked about it the other time. I think the person is just coming in. You know, we talked about it. We talked about the source of your input. And what is the input in this case? The input is the bed. Where do you get your bed from? Do you understand the bed very well? Because each of these beds has their own protocol. Each of them has their own protocol. So do you really, do you get the protocol from the company you buy from? What are the things they say you should do? As when do they say you should do it? Do you follow? Uh... Um, please, can we indicate if we're still communicating? Yes, thank you. Remember that you can follow the Top Farmer Speaks on social media in case you missed this session. We always put the sessions on YouTube. You can just search for Top Farmer Speaks and it will take you straight there so you can never miss a single program, all right? And if you're just joining in, we're discussing the poultry industry and how to profit, how to understand how uh, the working mechanisms, which is more profitable, egg or meat, uh, what it costs to establish your farm. Uh, I think Ambassador is back on. Are you there, sir? Well, I believe the ambassador is back. Yes, I'm uh, back. Sorry for that. I lost um, light on my laptop, so I have to switch to my phone. So I'm back people, here. There are people who may not believe you. Maybe they want to see the food you're eating. So <laughs> maybe I'm not you eating. took a break. You, you took a break my laptop you. is dead, so I'm, I'm back on my phone. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you very much. Sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. So you are, we were yeah, saying about the weight thing that the sauce... The source of the farm uh, sometimes matter. Then the understanding of the of what you're doing also matters. What are you doing? Are you doing it the right way? So if you are not, please, you rush to an expert that can help you. 
The moment you notice that your birds, because if they don't have the right weight, they won't drop. And when they drop, the eggs will be tiny. So you need to, to somebody that you, you know, who is mentor, who is your teacher? Where did you learn from? You need to talk to somebody that can quickly come to the farm and look at the situation. Is it that your farm is dirty? There are a lot of things that can cause all those things. If your farm is dirty, then this can happen. So we need to look at it. Somebody needs to come over there and do a physical analysis and look at what is going on. So please quickly uh, work on that. Get somebody to give you a solution. And uh, I believe there, there's a solution for every problem. There's a solution for every problem. Thank you. Uh, if you are still here, I believe you are, you can still ask questions. Um, they're asking for contact information for consultation. I believe that would be via the uh, Stop Farmer Speaks. You can just go to our platform on social media because we, um, Ambassador Adeni Shola has been imported for this program. So unless you want to re-import him, you have to send your message to us. I will not give you his number directly. I cannot do that. So please, you, let's do let's do the needful. You know what to do. Go to Top Farmer Speaks, and so you can send your. If you need to do a personal consultation with him, yes. But let me tell those that want to consult. Uh, for, the, for those that want to consult, eh, I am highly uh, affordable, but I'm not cheap. <laughs> yes, as always, you are a reputable uh, industry expert. Obviously. So please, uh, any more questions? The floor is still open for questions, please. Uh, I'm going to go back to the email. We have an email. Uh, additional questions can be sent to info at the top farmer.ng. That is info at the top farmer ng. Just go there if you have a question, additional question, or you can just raise your hands and I can connect you live. Let's try that out. Uh, we've been talking now. Let's, I think somebody is raising their hands. Okay. So you can uh, go ahead and uh, ask your question. That is from uh, Everglow Farms. Okay. Everglow Farms. Farms. You would like to uh, go ahead and talk. Please um, let us connect you directly. Where is um, Everglow Farms? Are you ready there? Are you ready, please? Okay. Hang on a second. Uh, we need to connect you. Yes. All right, ever go uh, farms? Please go ahead and ask the question. Are you there? Ever glow farms? Okay, I I believe we, I, we want to put you live. Ever glow farms? Please, you can go on live. Oh, if we cannot connect with you live, then you can. Uh... Hello, sir. Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, my question, I've already asked so many questions before, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, like this training of a thing, uh, what do you have for some of us that are still uh, in surface? How do we benefit from the program? Thank you. Hello. Did you hear the question, uh, Ambassador? Yes, I do. But a bit, uh, uh, Everglow Farm is already a farmer. <laughs> so um, our trainees are, like I said, we have different type of trainees. We have um, farm support trainees where we periodically bring farmers together to share about uh, new technology, new solutions in the agribusiness sectors. And we also have paid trainings. You know, paid trainings are training whereby um, you want to know about something that we do and you think we are in the right position to teach you about that. Then you pick your duration, then you make your payment, you come around. Most of our trainings, we have accommodation here. Our farms are actually in the city. You know, it's a farm in the city. So most time people think when you talk about farm, it has to be bush, bush, bush. No. So you come around and, and you, you get the training. So we have just different type of training for those, for the IT student, for CUS student, for uh, youth coppers, even we give them, you know, allowance. They don't even pay. 
we be, we give them allowance, especially the serious ones. So for our normal training, uh, we are in Ogo State Abekuta to be precise. We do what we call industry evolution and evaluation project where today, what is going on in the industry you want to do? What is going on in the crop in, in, in industry? What is going on in the vegetable industry? Where is the money in agribusiness? You know, these are solution-based uh, conversations that, that we do. And it's always open to all farmers that can make it. We do this like quarterly, you know, 100% sponsored by, by my company. And we just bring farmers, it's like a stakeholders forum. But this time around is a solution based, not the normal one where you come to speak big grammars. Sometimes they are question and answer session throughout. You have a problem in your farm, it's like a clinic, a business clinic kind of a thing. We have different experts. You want to talk about ginger, somebody's talking to you about ginger. You want to talk about maize, somebody's giving you a solution about maize. Somebody's giving you about cassava, pea green, you know, poultry, name it. We do this, these are free. But trainings that are customized are uh, paid training. Thank you. So that's it. So far, so good. We do have another video clip before we um, take some more questions. And uh, this video clip has a very interesting title. It's called Water Break. Um, but before we go into that, I'm going to give you another chance to um, uh, ask uh, on uh, Honorable Ambassador Adeni Shola a question because he has exhausted almost all the entire went length and breadth of poultry farming <laughs> um but uh, we, we really appreciate you sir thank you very much for gracing this platform for us um gentlemen ladies and gentlemen uh, you will feel free to please ask your questions one last time you can also send your email to info at the top ng we have a lot of people online um let us all not just be remaining mute <laughs> if you have a question you can throw forward um there are, there's one more question, then we can uh, possibly see that uh, video clip. Um, uh, please, Honorable, this question is, uh, is it economical to go into rearing of the local breeds? You know, they have the local breeds and you have the, I think the foreign breeds, I don't know what they call them. <laughs> you know, you have local dog and, you know, German Shepherd. I don't know if that's the right an analogy to use, but you have the local yes. ones. You are permitted. You are permitted to do that. Who makes them look out? We. Yes. We, because we don't appreciate ours. So, they are. They actually happens to be, uh, in in East Africa, uh, because I, I've stayed across almost African countries. In East Africa, they call them KNG, KNG chicken. KNG chicken is the most expensive chicken. The same thing that we call our locals. Why do we call them locals? Because because they are the big prolific, they are strong, and they can. What I told you about broiler the other time, doing you shake it when you don't feed them, the local ones can move around and source for some stuff on their own. Now, there have been research across that by breathing, you know, some of this local with cockroach, and you now have different names for them, different names. They are very strong. They are easy to, you know, take care of. And a lot of edge conscious people now prefer to take that. So I told you something. Any part you pick in agribusiness, any niche you hold, once you have the in-depth knowledge about it, you will make money. I agree there is a lot of money in the industry, but it also requires a lot of money. So rearing local chicken is us is a very lucrative one. We don't even have a very big farm doing that yet. When I say big farm, I don't know whether you've come across a video of a Chinese guy uh, on YouTube where he has over 10,000 uh, cockerel and he's feeding them and all of them is rushing. You know, those are big farms. You know, this animal will source themselves. You only feed them, say, 40%. And you can sell each one of them for 2,000, 2, 3,000 naira. You can imagine if you have a thousand and you're selling for three thousand, there's some money. So it's something we can do. It doesn't really stress you, but once you know that you can sell it, no production without market. Don't even try it. Don't produce when you don't have market. Thanks. 
All right, thank you very much. Uh, I think this is where we have to pause. And uh, before we call it today, we would like to remind everyone who's online, thank you very much. Uh, if I missed your name, uh, it's not intentional. Uh, but uh, we are going to watch a clip, a video clip. It's called Water Break in the next few seconds. This question is from jo Joshua Aja, who says, what was the challenge exporting your docs to where it is eaten or something? I heard people also do ostrich poultry in some African countries. Is there a way we can export our own also? Uh, what was the challenge exporting your docs? That is from um, Joshua Aja. That will be our last question, sir. Yes, I, I never talk about exporting them. You don't you can't export birds easily like that. You know, it has to go through a lot of um, a lot of line sensitivity. But why export? Uh, if you're doing any birds that you can sell locally, you don't need to export. Ostrich market is in the northern region of the country and it's also in hundreds of millions. Yes. A baby ostrich is as, as expensive as 45,000 per pair. So it's a business. Uh, but for me, I say, can you buy an ostrich and slaughter? I will look at that. I told you my geese, I gave them house. I gave it to my, you know, to my godfathers, to my big people, these, that, that people that I know, I need to give something to them and I don't have money. I take a geese or two to your compound and they go, wow, yeah, yeah, thank you. Because my geese are very big. I give all of them out because I can't even imagine slaughtering the geese and eat. So for the dog, the challenge is, we have a lot because they're also very prolific. They give birth, they give you egg every day. Chicken give you egg. How do I calculate that? You, you get, there's a day off, not like every of every day. There's a, you get it around midnight. Ambassador, I think maybe we lost you again. Um, hello, yeah, I'm there. back, I'm back. Yes, I'm back, I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, please. Okay, so duck drops every morning. We pick that. We pick our birds. We pick our eggs around um, eight a.m. This is how it works. You put your dog in the stores. They play around during the day. They go into their pen, and around nine, you prepare where they will eat. So you open them. They come out around eight thirty nine to eat. That is when you go to the pen and pick eggs. If you have hundred dogs, you you we pick hundred eggs. So you can imagine hundred eggs per day. And we hatch them 28 days. <laughs> you know, I got 500. Do you see them moving around? They follow each other. You know, they, they, they move. So people, they are not buying them. Some people that want to buy will be like, oh, no, they are not local. They prefer the white and black with the red stuff. On. You know, and you begin to wonder what happens. So we start giving out people to people that eat. You know, you take one here, you take two there, you take three there. That was how I stopped the business. And I don't see myself doing that again, at least for now, maybe when the appreciation for duck meat then you know increase. And it's one of the best meats. You can Google it, you can search it out. Very tender, highly delicious. If you, if you have taken duck egg, you won't take chicken egg, you won't. Very strong and fluffy, lovely birds. The same thing with ostrich. You know, but what we'll get there, we'll get there as people, as a nation, we'll get there because most of the information we need are not available. We have a huge information and knowledge gap when it comes to agribusiness in Nigeria. That is why you still believe, oh, when you kill a dog, you have to put money in their mouth and all this, all these things. So we'll get there. So if you don't have market for it, do please don't do it. Please don't do it. All right, on that note, we have to pause and watch a video clip before we say goodbye to our honorable speaker today. He is Ambassador Adeni Ishola Bumi. Uh, if I did mention before, you maybe you missed it, an Israeli trained agri business development value chain expert with a passion for agricultural advocacy and lots of experience in agricultural advisory services. Thank you very much, sir. You know, I, I, I think this is one of my favorite sessions of all. And please uh, do st stay with us and uh, let's see a video clip on the topic is water break. 
Nigeria is reported to be the largest producer of eggs in Africa. With 10.3 billion eggs produced annually, the demand for table eggs in Nigeria has been estimated at between 8 to 10 million tons, while current supply is put at 3 to 4 million tons. This leaves a 4 to 6 million ton supply deficit waiting to be filled by discerning entrepreneurs. To help bridge this gap in demand and supply and stimulate local production, the government has also placed an outright ban on importation of poultry products. This has made investment of poultry production highly profitable recently. But what do the players in the egg market have to say about the business? The top farmer. Well, on that note, I think we've seen that video and um, Ambassador, you've answered all the questions concerning that. But Ambassador, is everything said in that video, is it correct? Yes, can, can you hear me, sir? So moot. Oh, sorry, I didn't know I was moot. Yes, it's correct. Yeah, yeah, there were, there, were some, there were some figures and facts in that video. I yes. don't know if you were listening. Yes, it's I don't know Even if... it's more than that now. It's more than that now, yes. Oh, yeah? It's correct, yes, it's correct. The only thing that should be there or the government need to work out about is the question asked by, um, I forgot the name of the farmer the other time, is input, is the input. How well are the government playing in the input sector of, of the poultry business in Nigeria? That's a food for thought. The government should look at that, most especially when it comes to the feed, because feed take up to 70% of the input in, in production, in poultry production. Thank you so much for the information. Um, everyone online, thank you for joining this session of the Top Farmer Speaks. It was, it's been a poultry session. We have examined the length and breadth. I think maybe I'd like to call this a part one or a part two, maybe it depends on how you see it. We spoke about the broiler, the layer and the egg with our guest speaker, um, Ambassador Adeni Shola Bumi. Thank you very much for being our guest for today's show and everyone online as well. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Friday. So please remember to send an email to info at the top farmer in the NG. Uh, just send a message to us or, and we will get back to you. Info at the top farmer dot NG. Uh, for anything concerning poultry business, we will get back to you on that. And sir, please, we want to have you again, please. I'm always available uh, when it comes to the development of um, agribusiness in Nigeria. I'm always very, very available because I told you the other thing that the more we know, the more we understand, and the more we understand, the more we earn. And at the end of the day, the more we earn, the more we can better lives of others. So I'm always available. Yes, that's why I will vote for you when, when the time comes. <laughs> I'm a farmer. <laughs> All right, and we have some lovely messages for you as well from everyone who is saying we appreciate you, thank you, and the top farmer as well. Uh, this is where we, we say to be continued. We do not say goodbye. We say to be continued again. Thank you so much. Do follow our social media at The Top Farmer on all platforms. All right. Uh, before I go, sorry, my host, I want to give our people this. I think they will write this down. I want us to just, you, you can use this in all aspects of your life, um, most especially in the industry. Everybody, this is it. Think big. Think big. Start small, scale fast. Think big, start small, scale fast. Thank you. God bless you. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you to Shehu. Thank you to uh, Mutlaf and everyone on the platform today. It's been a fantastic session. Let's do this again on the Top Farmer Speaks. My name is Manny, your host. Uh, the morning, the, I am the breakfast show host of Cool FM 96.9 radio station. Lovely talking to you. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Have you ever wished for the opportunity to fully understand the agricultural and the agribusiness sector of the economy? This year is a great year to grow cassava, selling it for as high as $35,000 a ton. You've heard about the monies that can be made from the sector, but you don't know where to start. Good morning. Welcome to the Top Farmer. This is the Rubel Settlement, somewhere in your state. Welcome. To Oslat and Kubot Farms, Ejare, Ogu State. Now here we are, Sabo Market, right in the heart of Oyo Town. You can see there is lack of nutrients 
you don't have a farm and you don't have chickens, what do you have? You have the money. Yes. The calico peeler is the one spinning, right? Exactly. It exactly. spins the cassava and takes off some of the stuff from it. You lost four million naira in yeah, one day. You cover the money again. What is the capacity? We have about 60,000 birds. 60,000 birds. The Newcastle disease that is mentioned is a disease that is endemic in Nigeria. If there's any insect, the, insect, the chemical will eat the insect and the chemical and the insect will die. That's the major hazard you face. Funny enough, if anything goes into the pond, the fishes will eat it. Let's, let's just stay out of the water for now. <laughs> <laughs>